This is going to be our second review session for CHEM 202 and this is going to cover chapter 3 and 4. So this is a review for exam 2 to cover chapter 3 and 4. First question I'll be asking you uh, about different types of isomers, C strands, isomers, E, Z isomers. So let me go over C strands. When I give you a skeletal structure, sometimes it could be a little bit confusing. So let me make it clear how we can know C or trans isomers. So let me give you a compound. So I have here one, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's have a double bond between uh, two and three. So between two and three, there is a double bond. So there's a two and a double bond between two and three and rest are all single bond. Keep this in mind, these are all carbon, 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 carbon. So, and except where this is Cl. So before I try to name this compound, I need to first find out uh, whether, since I have a double bond, these two groups could be on the same side or on the opposite side. Let's highlight them. What is attached to the double bond? So that determines whether C is a trans. Look at this group. This, from the double bond, this is going downward. From the double bond, this is going upward. So it's like a, a little bit tilted. So this is going downward, this is going upward. You'll be focusing only on this, what is attached to the double bond, not the rest of the molecule, what is bonded to the double bond. So they are going in opposite direction. So that means this is trans, not cis. So this is how you name this compound with brief for, uh, mentioning about cis or trans at the very beginning. Now let's complete the naming of this compound. We are going to name it as an alkene, so alkene group has to get the smallest possible number. So my numbering has to start from right hand side where Cl is, and also substituent group also has to get the smallest number. So that allows me to have one here, two, three, four, five, six. Six would be hexane, but this is a double bond, so hexene. So how am I going to name this compound? Trans 1 chloro. Well, this should be, if I had more than one uh, substituent group, I'd be ordering them according to alphabetic ordering. In this case, there's only one substituent group, chloro. So trans 1 chloro, you can say hex 2 in. In book, uh, they lately you'd see both kinds of naming, or you can say, so both are right at this time, trans 1 chloro, 2 hexene. So in older books, you'd have this name. So both are right. So this example shows you how we find out C or trans. Now, how can I make it cis? If you want to change it to cis, it's going to look like this. The double bond here, and let's not change, uh, you can keep this intact, or let's have this moved. CL. That was downward, now I moved it upward. C. Okay. So now, this gives me, I lost one carbon here. There's a carbon in here, and then Cl. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. This is Cl. So now you can see that around 
bond is double bond. If you want to write down hydrogen, it's just to give you best orientation of that group. These two are on the same side, so don't pay attention to the rest. So these two, so that makes the whole, this group as well as this group, on the same side. That makes it cis. So it would be cis 1 chloro hex 2 in, or cis 1 chloro 2 hexene. Both are right. Then I can give you a name of a compound, and I can give you a structure, which is cyclic, and let's see what they can name that compound. One, two, three, four, five, and say I have a group here, and a double bond here. So this is a five-membered cyclic carbon. Five-membered carbon with pentane, with double bond pentene, but if it's a cyclic compound, you say cyclopentene. So, cyclopentene at the end. Now, the, there is a rule. What if a cyclic compound, double bond has to get one and two. So, this has to get one and two. Now, question is whether this end is one or this end is one. Depends upon where this substituent group is. That has to get the smallest number. So, if I have 1, 2, 3, 4, then it gets 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. In both ways, it gets the same number, so it doesn't matter. So, I can number here 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is the ethyl group. One carbon here, one carbon here. So, you can write it down 4 ethyl cyclo. Pentene. I don't have to say pent two in or pent one in because it, this is uh, pretty much well accepted. It has to be one and two when it's in ring structures. So it's redundant to say uh, one uh, cyclopentene. Now, third kind of problem. would be on priorities of groups. So that we can determine which one is E and which one is Z isomer. Let me write down this the two groups. One is CH double bond CH2 the other one is CH, CH3, 2. This line means where it's, it's attached to the rest of the molecule. This is where it is attached to the rest of the molecule. Now, to, just to remind you about priorities, you go by atomic number. The higher atomic number would have higher priority. But if you can't make a decision based on the connectivity for one atom, then move to the next atom next atom until you see difference in atomic number. The larger atomic number would have higher priority. So a periodic table in front of you uh, would, would be very helpful when you're trying to determine priorities of groups. Now, here, let's write down here more explicitly. This carbon is bonded to this hydrogen. So this carbon is bonded to hydrogen. And double bond be considered as two single bonded carbon. So this carbon is bonded to one hydrogen and two carbon because of the double bond. This carbon is bonded to, already has two hydrogens, and two carbons. These two double bonds would be two carbons. So that's how you're going to consider this. And in this case, this carbon is bonded to one hydrogen and two carbons. I don't need to, and these are CH3, of course you can also consider them too, but let's first see, this is two carbon. If you want to see more explicitly, this would look like the CH, CH3, CH3. 
Now, according to our rule, whenever it's a double bond, assume that there's a single bonded carbon. So let's redraw this according to the rule. C, H, it's going to be a little changed because of the fact that we are assuming that this double bond means two single bonded carbon. So this is one of them. This is the second one. The second one already has two hydrogens bonded. This is a two hydrogen bonded and there are two carbons. So one carbon is already there. This is the second carbon. So your connectivity for this compound is considered to be like this. So now you compare with this for this compound. This is the point of attachment. First you encounter a carbon, here also you encounter a carbon. You can't make a decision. Next one, next two are carbon, next two are carbon, so can't make a decision. Go to the next one. So obviously this has higher priority because here you run out of other carbons, you have only hydrogen. But here you have another carbon, this is the higher priority and this is the lower priority. So some of this could be a little tricky when you have several bonded atoms which are identical. So pay extra careful. Now sometimes it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the next problem will be one of the homework problems from the book. And uh, let's assign priorities and identify E or Z isomer for that compound. So I'll give you a number of groups and you have to identify whether they are, which one is higher priority and which one is a lower priority. Book has quite a few other examples. Uh, make sure you try to work on them. This is going to, this is structure is taken from the book. C double bond C. You have CH3. Then this is CH2, CH3. And then on this side, you have CH2OH, and then you have C, CL. Now, this question is about EZ, representation of isomers. In order to determine E or Z, assume that, assume that two parts of this molecule, so assume that first we focus on the left-hand side and then on the right side. Here, the first bonded atom is carbon. Here, also, the first bonded atom is carbon. So, we can't make a decision based on the first bonded atom. But let's look for the next ones for higher atomic number. So, we have carbon. This one has only hydrogen. So, this gets high priority. So, this is high. And this gets the lower priority. Now, on the right hand side, Cl has a higher atomic number than carbon. So, if you look at periodic table, that's what you find. So, this is high. And this is low. So whenever you get a higher atomic number, right away you can write down higher, I mean higher priority. Two highs on the same side, and it's called Z, same side. So Z isomer, having two highs or two lows on the same side. If they're on the opposite side, then it would be called E. So try practicing a few other molecules like that. So that's going to be fourth type of problem with E and Z. Now fifth type of problem would be, I would ask you whether a particular type of reaction, what type of reaction we have. So I'd be giving you addition. Elimination, elimination, substitution, substitution, and rearrangement. Now I'm going to give you one example. Let's let's see one example then you can find out. So this is HNO3, H2SO4 is the catalyst. If you do that, this compound is going to be, the final product is going to be 
M2 here. Question is, what kind of reaction is this? Now, if you want to write down the full product, this is going to be one hydrogen going out of it, but I don't need to pay attention to that. <clears throat> as soon as you see NO2, now look at it here. This carbon had three bonds, so it has one hydrogen here. Each of these had one hydrogen. Now, that, if you look at this compound, there is no hydrogen. That means hydrogen has been replaced by NO2. Now, why there is no hydrogen? Because it already accounts for four bonds. This carbon has one, two, three, four, four bonds. So this is substitution. That means NO2 substituted hydrogen of this particular compound. So that's substitution reaction. Let me write down one more. Say after heating, this is what we get. What kind of reaction is this? Is this addition? No. In addition, there would be no double bond. They'd be all bonded to something else. Elimination? No, it's still you have one double bond. Elimination would give you another double bond or triple bond. Substitution? No, nothing got substituted here. Rearrangement, yes, double bond got rearranged from here to here. So this is rearrangement. So make sure you know by looking at this reaction what kind of reaction is given to you. In six type of problem, I would like you to uh, I understand the energy diagram. Basically, I'll check you whether you understand how, what this means, what is, what is the location of reactant, product, transition state. So reactants are here, products are here, this is the energy along y-axis. So reactants, products, this is called transition state. Transition state. Uh, let me explain this to you. Reactants before, I mean, they, when they react, it has to have minimum energy. And this is the minimum energy. It's called activation energy. Let's write down here, activation energy as Ea. Ea is activation energy. That means for this reaction to happen, you have to provide enough energy, activation energy, so that it goes to a transition state. Transition state is a temporarily there, and then it goes to the other side where, where, you, and where you get products. So what is the energy change here? Energy change is given by this value. In this case, reactants have a higher energy, products have a lower energy. So the difference is given off. Think about initially you have, say, $15. You went to the mall, came back and you had five. So the $10 you gave it to somebody to buy certain things. So that energy is given off. Similarly, initial have higher energy, final lower energy, so extra energy is given off, or this is an exothermic reaction. So you have to understand this uh, kind of energy diagram. Then I would ask you to identify 
carbocation and carb anion. When you say carbocation, that means carbon with a positive charge. Usually they are sp2 hybridized carbon. So let's write down this C C C C C. If that's a carbon is sp2 hybridized, and that's called carbocation. Carb anion, on the other hand, will have a negative charge. You have a pair of electron in here, so that's like a tetrahedral structure, sp3 hybridization, that's carb anion, that's a negative charge. In many reactions, carbocation is formed in the middle or in transition state, or carb anion is being formed as an intermediate or a transition state. Now, in naming alkyne, make sure you, just like naming of any, any other functional groups, if you're going to name something as alkyne, I left out hydrogens. This is an alkyne having a triple bond. Since I'm going to name it as Y-N-E at the end, so my longest chain must contain the triple bond. So this is my longest chain. I number it in such a way so that my functional group gets the smallest possible number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in the fifth location, I have methyl group. So I should say fifth, five methyl. And then I have six carbon, six carbon, the hexane. If it's all saturated, there's no double bond or triple bond. Since I have a triple bond, it becomes hexine. So you can say 5-methyl, hex, and then 2-YNE. Or 5-methyl, 2-XY. Eventually, all the naming would be like this. But at this point, both uh, are accepted. Prior to 1993, you had this. So in older books, you'd have these names. Then I would ask you about sin and anti-addition products. And whether you recognize them or not, I'll test that. Sin and anti products. Basically, sin means both groups being added, they're added to the same side. And anti means they're added to opposite sides. For example, if I have hexagonal ring, and say I have two groups added like this, that's sin. If they're added in opposite direction, it's called anti. Now you have to know which reactions give you syn addition, which gives anti addition. Hydrogenation to the double bond. So if hydrogen is added to the double bond, they will be all added on the same side. So that's syn addition. Basic permanganate. 2OH would be added to the same side. That's syn. 
So what would be anti? If I have a double bond and then I have Br2 or halogen, Br2, Cl2, I2, etc. They're added. It would be always anti-addition. One Br would be going up, the other one would be added uh, to the other direction. So keep that in mind. For hydrogenation of the double bond or triple bond, it could be double or triple is bonded from the same side. That's why sin for halogens is going to be anti-addition. According to give you, if there is cis trans possibility, you're going to get, in this case, cis isomer. Here you get trans isomer. Next type of question would be stability of carbocation. Say for example, this is the question given in exam. Which of these two carbocation is more stable? Obviously, I left out carbon and hydrogen. So if you want to fill in, be carbon, 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 and rest are hydrogens. So what kind of carbon is this? The central one, with asterisk, the three other carbons bonded. So this is three degree carbocation. And this carbon cation is 2 degree. The so stability goes like this. 3 degree carbocation, CC is carbocation, more stable than 2 degree carbocation, and more stable than 1 degree carbocation. So I'll be asking you one question like this. It could be a ring compound, or it could be just a straight chain compound like this. Then I'll ask you several reactions and make sure you know them. Pro how to write down products of those reactions. Reactions to unsaturation, it could be double bond, it could be triple bond. So type A reaction could be HCl, HB, HBr, HI. We are going to apply Markovnikov's rule. So assume that there is no exception. So Markovnikov's reaction. So let me show you the Markovnikov's rule by going over this. Okay, there's a double bond here. If you, for it would be helpful if you write down explicitly hydrogen, especially around the double bond. So, I have one, two, three, four. This has no hydrogen. This has one hydrogen. So now that should be good enough because the addition happens to the double bond. Say I'm adding HCl. According to Markovnikov's rule, hydrogen of this acid would go to that carbon which already has largest number of hydrogen. Here, one hydrogen, no hydrogen. So this gets the new hydrogen, and Cl goes to the other one. Now it could be from same side or from opposite side, doesn't matter, because there is no such uh, preference of sin or anti-addition. So basically, this is what you are going to get. C, C, H, H. Okay, this C means CH3, don't forget that, because carbon must have four bonds. CH3, so that would make it less confusing at this at the beginning. And then there'd be no double bond because it's the 
pi bond is broken now when the addition takes place. CH3, CH3, and then you have Cl here. And there is no C so trans because uh, there is a free rotation of the single bond. So similar reaction would happen with HBr or HI. Now keeping this molecule same, let's move to the next reaction. Now this time we're going to add H2 in presence of a catalyst, palladium or platinum. So it could be either one. Hydrogen addition takes place in a syn manner. So two hydrogens must be added from the same side. But in this case, even though they're added to the same side, since it's not a ring compound, it doesn't make any difference because it, there's a free rotation. If I had a ring compound, you're going to get a cis isomer if one cis trans isomer is possible, having those other groups. So let me show you the ring structure. If this is the ring structure, Say I have a double bond in here, one CH3 here, another CH3 here. If I'm adding H2, or you can even have, it doesn't have to be two CH3. One could be uh, CH2, CH3. So it doesn't have to be an identical group. So one hydrogen, so this is HH, goes this way. Second one also goes this way. So that means it's going to depress these two downward. So that means you'd end up with a cis isomer. So I end up with a cis. You can write down here like this. E comes first, one ethyl, two methyl, cyclo, hexane, then you have to write down cis in front, because it's a cis, the syn addition takes place. If I had halogen, Br2, then Br2, Cl2, I2, you'd have anti-addition, because it goes through bromonium, chloronium, or iodonium ion, so there would be anti-addition product. Now you can also have addition of water by using Markovnikov's uh, rule and predict the product. Now how can I predict addition of H2O? Markovnikov's rule, consider H2O as H and OH. Now you can apply easily Markovnikov's rule. This carbon has a larger number of hydrogen, so hydrogen goes in there, so, and OH goes to the other one. So H goes in here, and OH comes here. And so your final product is C, there's no double bond anymore, CH3, H, Again, there is no syn or anti-addition. It can happen from both sides. So CH3, CH3, and OH. So, so this is also based on uh, Markovnikov's group. Here you need sulfuric acid as a catalyst. So make sure you read these reactions carefully. Next series of reactions is given by permanganate.
Now there would be two types of reactions depending upon whether it's an acidic copper manganate or basic. If it is acidic means you added an acid together with potassium permanganate. If that is the case, these would be the products. Let me write down. So if you want to write down hydrogen explicitly because that would help. There's a hydrogen here. And here, one, two, three, four, there's no hydrogen. Plus KMnO4, and that's acidic, H3O plus. Or you can just write down acidic. It breaks down. Acidic would always break the double bond. And then keep in mind, from left side you have one product, right side there will be another product, depending upon how many hydrogens are bonded to the double bond. If there is one hydrogen bonded, you get carboxylic acid. So one hydrogen that gives carboxylic acid, COOH. So from this end, right hand side, you get COOH. So let me write down that product. And there is no hydrogen, so that would be ketone from the other end. So that's from left hand side, there is no hydrogen. No H, so you can get a ketone. If I had a hydrogen here, so it could be aldehyde, so it could be ketone or aldehyde. In this case, it's ketone, because this one is a carbon. So basically, there will be C double bond O. So from that end, you get C double bond O. From this end, you're getting COOH, keeping the number of carbons same. There are two carbons. So it's going to be CCOOH. So what you need to keep in mind is, if there's one hydrogen, keep the number on the right side, two carbons same, and then change that to COOH. And here, no hydrogen, keep it, uh, make it C double bond O. It could be aldehyde or ketone. Now in lecture note, I mentioned that if there are two hydrogens at the double bond, you get carbon dioxide from this end. And of course, no hydrogen, we already mentioned that would be ketone. Now, what would happen if it's a basic reaction rather than acidic? Acidic would break down. If permanganate is basic, basic means we added sodium hydroxide or another base. It's not going to split the double bond, so there'd be no splitting. Only the pi bond is going to work, going to react. So you're going to end up with C in addition of two OH group. So I'm going to add one OH here, one OH here. Even though it's a C in addition, the product would not make it cis because there's a single bond. If I had a ring structure, then yes, you're going to get a cis isomer. If I have a triple bond and you're adding water there, H2O, the catalyst in this case is mercuric sulfate and sulfuric acid. Again, you can apply Markovnikov's rule. Hydrogen goes here, OH goes here. So you'd have one, two, three, four. There will be double bond. The triple, the other pi bond is broken. There are two pi bonds and one sigma bond in this case. One of the pi bonds is broken. Hydrogen is bonded there. And OH is here. I'm going to write down OH like this so that I can show you the next step. This is called enol. Enol is not very stable. So what happens is there is rearrangement happens and finally this hydrogen goes over there so you end up with, let's write down this up, on a stable, you get a ketone at the end. So whenever you have enol, you finally end up with C double bond O group. So in this case you get ketone. So these are a series of reactions you'd expect in this exam.
and then we'll have a question on resonance. Because resonance make a molecule more stable. So that's why we give so much emphasis on resonance. And we'd like to see whether you can draw resonance structures. I'll give you a structure like this, or anything similar to this. Say I have a group in here, and this is a carbo cation. And say I make a double bond in here. So if I ask you the number of resonance structures, how many possible? How many resonance possible for this? Let me show you how this you can write down. Starting from here, this is the given one. You can move this double bond from here to here. So you get now double bond goes here, and this remains intact. Now this carbon must get a positive charge. Now let's try to understand that. For that, for the time being, let's write down hydrogens, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. There are two hydrogens in here because carbon has two bonds. And there is no hydrogen here because that's the positive charge. Now, if you come to this carbon, this is the carbon. It has three bonds. So it lost one bond. And that's how you can assign positive charge. Or you can calculate formal charge. How many electrons you'd be counting around this? Take half of the shared pair. One, two, three. So this carbon has three electrons uh, by getting the sharing. But neutral carbon must have four valence electrons. 2s2, 2p2. So it's supposed to have four, but it has three. So that means it has one less. So positive charge gets here. So this would be called, let's consider this to be 1, this is 2, and the next one, bring this double bond in here. This is normally used for resonance. Double bond here, double bond here, so positive becomes here. Same reason, you have, it lost the pi bond. Or you can say, by counting uh, formal charges, there's a hydrogen in here. So it'd be three electrons. It lost one electron, so it's plus. This is the third one, including the given one. And the fourth one would be coming from here. Let's make it clear. This electron pair can also come over here. So that's, that would give you the fourth one. And now positive charges at the end. Remember, there are two hydrogens in here. So all together now we have four, very, uh, four resonance structures. So if I give you this question and ask you how many resonance structures are there all together, your answer would be four. And this concludes our second review session for exam two, exam two or two.